Coming up next, things you shouldn't say in your job interview, and then I'm going to give you the secret to performing under pressure. We'll take your chat questions and your calls, and it starts right now. I am coming to you live from Ramsey Solutions Studios in Nashville, and you are joining a conversation about who you are, what you were created to do, where you want to do that, and then how you get there. This is a fun topic for you because it is all about you. I hope you've sensed a pattern here. But actually, in some ways, even though the show is about you, this whole conversation is really not about you because it's about your purpose, and your purpose isn't about you. Your why is about others. We believe that you were created to fill a unique role in this world through your work. That means you are tremendously valuable despite how you may feel today, despite what maybe others have said about you in your journey. You are very valuable because somebody in this world needs you to show up day in and day out and be the best version of you. So this idea of calling is about contribution. This idea uh, that work really does matter It isn't about the secular definition of success, which is money and notoriety or power. It is about purpose. It is about contributing what your creator gifted you with to give to others. We look at it very simply. You were given three primary gifts to then give away. Number one is talent. That's what you do best. Number two is passion. This is work that you actually love to engage in. And number three is mission, the results of your work that you are producing to make the lives of others better. Those results are what fill your heart up. So that's where we start. That's the premise. And there are seven stages like a climb up the mountain to your professional pinnacle. Get clear, get qualified, get connected, get started, get promoted, get the dream job, give yourself away. What stage are you in? We'll help you identify that stage and then get you the next one. 844-747-2577 is the toll-free number to jump in. Today's the day that somebody needs to get clarity. I can just tell you right now, you're on YouTube, and if you're watching live, 12.02 Eastern Standard Time, some of you need to call right now. I'll take good care of you. We're going to help you out. 844-747-2577 is the phone number. You can also submit your question via the chat room. We'll get to those questions on my laptop a little bit later. And don't forget, later in the program, I'm going to give away the secret sauce to performing under pressure. Some of you go, oh my gosh, I got this big job interview coming up. It'll be the most nerve-wracking thing many of you ever face. And I'm going to teach you how to perform under pressure. So all that coming up. But first, great article the team pulled Uh, from CNBC uh, about six things to not say during the job interview. I think this is going to be a monumental year. I've been saying this. I think 2021 is going to see some of the most uh, dramatic numbers we've ever seen as it relates to people changing work. I know there's still a lot of people that need to get work, but our unemployment number is still very, very low. Low sixes right now. That's pretty fantastic given the seismic shift we saw in the job market in 2020. But I think you're going to see more and more people say, you know what, COVID woke me up and I'm not doing work I love. I'm tired of going to work on Mondays and being miserable. I think you're going to see a lot of people begin to make a shift. And we're going to be here to help you. So this is a great little article, things not to say. uh, And they kind of culled these together from a lot of uh, interviews with hiring managers. Here we go. Uh, Don't say I'm a motivated self-starter. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with expressing that in the interview. But they're talking about this phrase because this is a lazy kind of a, everybody says this. It's like a buzzword. So instead of saying that, demonstrate that in other ways. Uh, number two, uh, in, in a few years, I hope to be in your position. Again, this comes across as uh, fake. It comes across as uh, gross flattery. It's disgusting. Don't say that. It's it's lazy again, and all it does is create question marks in the minds of the hiring manager. Number three, I didn't like my previous boss. Folks, 
I got to tell you, it, 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 it's hysterical that we even have to tell folks this. But people will say this. People will go into job interviews and they will slam their previous employer, the company or the leader. Now, quick asterisk on this. Some of you are in those job interviews because you've, you are leaving or want to leave a toxic environment. But you still don't need to go in there and spew all that. Because you got a person looking at you, they don't they don't work there, they don't know what it's like over there. And you start running somebody down and throwing somebody under the bus, a previous employer company, that's gonna raise question marks in the minds of the people you're there to join. They go, Oh, what's going on? What are they gonna say about us after three weeks? Don't create those unnecessary questions. Here's the deal. Always be thinking forward. I'm here because of this job and where I believe this company will allow me to contribute and grow in my life. So it's all about the positive you're here for them. All right. Number four, my biggest weakness is that I'm a perfectionist. Uh, this is a humble brag. And again, it just comes across as gross. My biggest weakness is that I'm a perfectionist. Blech. Ugh. I honestly, I don't hear that at all. I don't hear that. Really? Your biggest weakness is that you are trying to be perfect. Oh, jeez. Don't say that kind of stuff. The humble brag stuff. Don't do that. And then number five, can you tell me more about the company? Well, you should have done your homework, Sparky. I think that's what they're thinking when you say stuff like that. Uh, what have you been doing the last two or three weeks uh, since we scheduled this interview? Uh, no, you should never go in and say things like that. Now, what you can say, some of the, the interview questions we rec recommend in my free How to Win the Interview Guide at KenComal.com would be, how would you best describe the culture? What do you love most about working here? Now, those are thoughtful questions. That'll put a hiring manager on a little bit like, whoa, we got we got somebody here who is thinking with some depth. Now, those kind of questions, great, but don't, hey, tell me about the company. No, it's lazy, and it looks like you didn't prepare at all, and that's not good. Remember this. I say this all the time. Folks, uh, at its core, the interview process is about the company or the hiring manager determining, can you help them win? That's not a bad position and it's not crass, but I like to boil things down like that because you got to remember that, you know, they're trying to determine whether or not they think you can help them win. So prove it, show it to them. 844-747-2577. All right. I got the Ken Coleman show pencil in my hand. That means we're ready to go to the phones. Justin, is that right? Justin? Okay, got different spelling there. Justin from New York City, New York, the Big Apple. Justin, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Ken, thank you so much for taking my call. I really appreciate it. You bet, man. How can I help? Well, long story short, I'm a former certified IT professional looking to re-enter that field after a long absence. Um, I will say that um, at the moment... Returning to college to pursue a degree isn't an option right now, but my question is, how would you suggest I stand out to potential employers? Uh, well, let's first start with the formerly certified IT professional. What does that mean? Does that mean that that certification is now uh, irrelevant or null and void? Explain that to me. Well... I'll keep it short. Um, at one point in time, I, wa I did hold two industry standard certifications while doing some temp work at the time to kind of build up my resume. Um, and after those two jobs, the contracts were up, I was pressured by some family members to give up my pursuit of that dream job. So unfortunately, I let those certifications expire. Okay. All right. Great. How much would it do those? Are those certifications still relevant if you were to go yes, get them again? Are. Okay. How much would that cost you? How much time would that take? To Not a lot of time at all, uh, based on my passion for the industry and, uh, the knowledge that I still have. Um, the cost is actually a few hundred bucks, which Great. now that I think about it, I can definitely swing. Yeah, of course. So let's go back and get those. If those are still relevant certifications and it takes very little time and money, which you just verified, let's go ahead and do that now. Because that's part of the answer to your question to me. How do I stand out? Well, we want to show them that you're qualified first. There's no standing out 
until we meet the baseline of I got to have my ticket to get me in the building. Now, is, you understand what I'm saying, Justin? Absolutely. All right, so let's do that. Check that off. That's item number one. That's your first to-do action. Let's go. Are there any other certifications that you know of that will also make you uh, further qualified beyond those two? One that I can think of that is definitely relevant is any certification that um, is offered by Microsoft for Windows 10. Uh Uh-huh. Um, something like that. Great. Because what is it? You know what you want to do. Describe it. What's the title or the type of role? What I'm looking to do is work as a an IT help desk technician. Great. So here's the deal. Everything, and I mean everything under the sun, that would make you a more attractive candidate, a more qualified candidate for being an IT help desk technician or whatever you want to call it, get that. Because it's not going to be that many things. So that's the baseline. We're going to get all the qualifications. We're going to get current. Okay. And the good news is you are in a great field where there's going to always be a need there. Now, if you want to go further up the ladder, what what would be the top of the ladder for you in, in IT? Let's say we got you back in and you were at the help desk. Would there be a couple of levels or what would be the dream job for you? The dream job for me in the IT field would be a network administrator. Okay. And and do you have those qualifications or that would come as a uh, that would come with the experience by getting back in and in this help desk help desk position? There are certifications available, yeah. but I personally feel like working as a help desk technician first would give me right. uh, some additional experience that would Great. certainly be relevant. All right. How to, long have you been uh, out? Propelling me into that spot. Great. I love it. So I'm with you on that. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to get in. Uh, so essentially, we're going to get on the ladder and then we're going to start climbing the ladder. So I think you're on the, on the right path. The only other thing I want to know quickly is uh, how long has it been since you've been in, in an IT position? It's been a while. Um, the last contract position I worked was back in 2014. So it's been a long absence, as that's I fine. mentioned. That's fine. But see, that's a mind game for you. See, at the end of the day, what do employers want to know? Have you done this work before? And the answer is unequivocally, yes, you've got experience. And then they want to know, do you have the uh, certifications in the relevant training? The answer is yes, you're going to be getting it shortly. And so other than that, it's just you're, you're, you're going to, when you, when you apply, you're going to follow the Ken Coleman resume guide. It's free at KenColeman.com. You're going to really work those connections while you're getting certified and getting qualified. You're also in stage three, which is get connected. So stage one is get clear. You're clear on what you want to do. Stage two is get qualified. We just discussed what you need to do. We've got a very short checklist there. It's not going to cost you a lot of time or money. Great news. And while you're doing that, you're working the proximity principle. It's my best-selling book. I'm going to give you a copy of it, whatever format you want. Uh, Amanda, let's get it to him. And you are really working hard while you're in stage two, getting qualified. You're also simultaneously in stage three, get connected. It, it is relationships, relationships, relationships. Let me say that again. It is about relationships. It's not about just who you know. It's about who they know. You may only know 200 people. Well, how many people do those 200 people know? Probably 200 people. And the number can grow and grow and grow and grow. And so what you're going to be doing, Justin, is you're going to be going, while I'm getting qualified, I'm I'm looking at companies and opportunities where I'd love to jump in there. Maybe they've got openings right now. We don't start the process until we're close to being qualified so that if they were to respond quickly, we've got no downtime there between um, the interview process and and getting qualified. So you know what to do. How do you stand out? Have a Ken Coleman Show resume. Uh, Beyond the free one that you get in the resume guide at KenColeman.com, we've got Six other templates that we've created. Our design team here at Ramsey Solutions are gorgeous. And they use my philosophy to make you stand out. But we gave you six different templates for $9.99. So it's not like, um, you know, uh, you know, I'm not buying a new pair of shoes on those things. But we're just making it very affordable for you uh, to go get those. So that's what you need to be doing. 844-747-2577 is the number. Let's go to Patty, who joins us in Wakeman, Ohio. Patty, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. 
Good afternoon. Um, I'm going to give you my question first. Should I take on a second career for a hobby? Should I retire or should I uh, do something more career oriented after retirement? Okay. I'm 55 years old. Mm-hmm. I work, I've got uh, 28 plus a couple months in at, uh, in the UAW. Okay. And very labor intensive. It's ruining my body. I've just gotten a complete knee replacement. I've had rotator cuff surgery. It kills you yeah. working on the concrete. Um, I'm an addict's mom, and I've been an administrator for many online support groups, so I've got that interest, and I'm, I'm pretty good at listening. Uh-huh. Um, so I, I really don't know, and I've got the UAW funding to pursue any classes to complete my bachelor's degree if I needed to. Fantastic. I guess, um, what am I going to do? Am I going to retire? Because they may even offer us a package deal. I don't know. Well, let me ask you this. If you retire, that does not preclude you from taking on a second career, correct? Correct. It, just my age and my body wearing out. <laughs> yeah, I get <laughs> it. I get it. But I, 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 uh, so we have three options. Option A, uh, take on a second career. Option B, do something as a hobby, and C, uh, stay retired. Stay retired. Yeah. yeah. What's your heart telling you right now? Your heart, um, not your head, not what everybody. My heart not what, is, yeah. What is it? It's it's continue working until I'm financially able to then pursue anything I want to do. I I love social, being social, talking, listening. Um, my what happens heart if has I, always been in the animals and all that. Animals and then others. Okay, so let me ask you this. If we yeah. fast-forwarded uh, the uh, retirement goal, the number in your head that you just kind of mm-hmm. mentioned, what would you be doing if you didn't have to work? You got that <laughs> number there. What would you be doing? What's this hobby Traveling. For? Traveling. Okay, great. Well, then I think we, we keep that traveling goal out there and any other kind of heart things that might be a lot of fun, but I think you take the retirement package and then you do this second career that's, that's closer to passion for you, whether it be, you know, supporting families that are dealing with substance abuse or whatever that is. Uh, Mm -hmm. But I think you do the second job because uh, you want to stay active mentally. You want to stay active emotionally. Uh, But if it's not a, a physically taxing job, uh, then I think it just it's a win for you in all those other areas. It keeps you active, keeps you engaged. You're doing work that you actually love and that is creating a result that's very missional for you. So that's mission. Um, right. And then once you reach that financial goal that you've got in your mind, now it's, okay, I'm going to go travel. And I'm going to do a lot of the hobby, personal passion things. And um, if I feel like I still need to do something because I'm bored, I could just do the same kind of passion work that was second career just on a uh, part-time level. How does that sound to you? That sounds perfect. That's, I'm going to pursue these courses available to me while they are. Good. I think yes, I love that. So what is going to be that second career? What are you going to go after? Is it is it some type Probably of... Probably some kind of social work. Good. Good for you. Good for you. Because see, that's a labor of love, yeah. too. And it's also continuing to help you on your financial goals. So, Patty, I think that's the plan. I think we got a good plan, and um, I'm really proud of you. And I I don't know that you'll ever get away from that second career. I think you just may do it less as you get older and as you continue to want to do some traveling and things like that. But I think that you can always do that, even if you did it on a volunteer level, you know, where it was just I'm giving myself away, Mm -hmm. which is stage seven. You know, you're working like mm-hmm. no one else because you're not even working for the money anymore, but you still show up and somebody says to you, Patty, I, I, I see on Instagram that you're traveling all over the world. Why do you continue to show up and work with these families? And you go, because I love them. Well, yeah. And the Lord keeps bringing me people. Even though I try to get love away that. from the addiction world, he keeps bringing them to me. So. Yeah, you know why? Because he needs you. Yep. He knows. He knows they need Patty. So you're never going to get away from that, and I think that's okay. So I think we got a great plan. I'm really proud of you, Patty. Uh, really Thank proud you. of you. Thank you for calling the show. I think you got a wonderful plan. I think a lot of us would want to be there. And I think for a moment, I just want to remind everybody. You know, I each day I try to remind you of the seven stages so that you all see that there is a clear path to get there. This isn't just some, you know, uh, Ken Coleman rah rah rally every day on the show. Oh, you can do this, and oh, it's going to be great. And I I I can't stand those 
cheap, cheesy, smarmy motivational messages from people. They don't give you any real plan. It's just, they want you to feel good. Well, you know, listen, I'm all for feeling good. But uh, what I've learned in my life is the more good I do, the better I feel. But I, here's my point. When we talk about get clear, understanding who you really are, discovering that unique role that God put you on this planet to fill, that's stage one. Then we, we get qualified to perform that role in stage two. And then stage three is we're getting connected so that opportunities come our way and we're not spending years banging our head against the wall. Because we have no idea how to find opportunity. We, we see how opportunity comes our way by putting ourselves around the right people in the right places. That's stage three. Stage four, eventually opportunity is going to come your way and you step in. The door opens and you walk right through. You don't question when the door swings open. I remember when I first came here to Ramsey Solutions, it was a big break for me. I've been going after it for seven years. And, uh, and, and, and Dave offered me the opportunity to come here. And I, and I drove back from Nashville. And I, I told a, a few key people in my life in Atlanta where we live. And one guy looked at me and said, well, have you prayed about it? And I went, no, I haven't prayed about it at all. We're going to do it. And he kind of looked at me like, well, that doesn't sound like you. I mean, what, what do you mean? And I went, what do I have to pray about? I've been praying for a door like this to open. And when God opens the door, I don't have to go, hey, uh, one second, God. Uh, this is the door I've been asking you to swing open. It's wide open. Are you sure you want me to walk through it? Think about it for a second, folks. I'm not, I didn't all of a sudden lose my faith. It's just like, this is the whole point. I have faithfully prayed and faithfully pursued an opportunity like this. And when the door swings wide open, walk through it. Is it scary? Yes. But you do it. So that's get started. And stage five is get promoted. You begin to do the things that allow you to get more opportunities and more doors opening. You keep stepping forward. Eventually, you're going to step into the dream job. I'm in my dream job. Am I done? Not even close. Am I fat and happy? No way. I'm starving for more results and more influence in the lives of others. I'm at the top, but I'm now I'm looking out. See, I've been, I was looking up for a long time, and I got there. And when you get to that dream job, it's not just, okay, I'm going to grab myself a pitcher of sun tea and hop in the hammock and, you know, sleep my way to the end. No, I'm not going to do that. I've expanded the vision. The dream is bigger. There's new mountains to climb. But I'm in that stage seven, which... Patty's fired me up to teach a little bit on that, that idea of giving yourself away. See, at this point, you're not working for money. It's not about power and it's not about fame. It's about maximizing the results and Patty's going to do that. And that's why you keep showing up. Why does Dave Ramsey show up all these years later? He's worth a ton of money. He doesn't have to do this. He really likes playing golf. He likes traveling with Sharon. He doesn't have to show up here anymore. Why does he do it? He's in stage seven. It's about giving himself away. It's about working like nobody else because you're just simply here to contribute. And it is the contribution to others that keeps you showing up. Everything else is just gravy. And so that's this idea that we talk about here when I get to that seventh stage. So, Patty, you're awesome. Love that. 844-747-2577. Quick break. When we come back, we'll take a couple questions from the chat room, and I'm going to give away the secret to performing under pressure. Don't move. This is The Ken Coleman Show. Our world is changing but so are we. Now, we see a smile through someone's eyes. We conquer our struggles and cherish each moment because we are shielded through faith and assured by hope. And greatest of all, we love. The world is different, but so are we.
Welcome back to the Ken Coleman Show. So excited to have you with us. It's a different kind of conversation we're having here on YouTube. And if it's encouraging you, uh, give us a thumbs up right there below the video window. Subscribe if you haven't already and share the show with others. Let them know, hey, uh, there's a live call and show every day on YouTube. And if you don't catch it live, you can catch it on demand because we put every day's show uh, within just minutes of wrapping our live show right now. If you're watching it, 1225 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we get that posted right after the show, and you can watch it anywhere in the world. And that's why we get callers all around the world, plus our podcast. If you'd like to get the audio version of this, don't forget, uh, you can get the audio version of the Ken Coleman Show wherever you listen to podcasts. Uh, all right, Joe, one of the things we love to do on Mondays um, is we love to get updates from our viewers and listeners, and we just read these little things. We call it Mo Momentum Monday, and the reason is because we love those little stories of, hey, I'm making progress, I'm making progress. It encourages us, but we also know it encourages you. So, uh, Joe, let's do a little Momentum Monday. Chase Hill writes in, uh, hey, Ken, I spoke to you in February of 2019, called into the show, and I wanted some advice on quitting my government job and becoming self-employed. Well, that dream is about to become a reality. It, is taking longer, it has taken longer than I had hoped for. Uh, but at the end of this month, I will finally be living my dream. I just wanted to say thank you for believing in me and giving me advice. Way to go. That's awesome, Chase. Uh, we need to email Chase, Joe, and if he, he needs to call in and let's do a dream scream. I'll let him share the whole story, the whole journey. Will do. Yeah. Uh, David writes in, we got another dream job here. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. He says, today is a culmination of years of failed attempts over a decade. Uh, setbacks, missed opportunities, laziness, stubbornness, immaturity, weak mindset. I'm guilty of it all, but today I win finally. <laughs> I got goosebumps all over my body there. I just had a little whoop. It was just kind of like the, somebody hit the goosebump switch back there in the old control room. Man, that's pretty awesome. I love the way he said that. How many among us have had to endure setbacks, missed opportunities, laziness, stubbornness, immaturity, weak mindset? Yikes. Love that. Uh, he now has a permanent position in his sweet spot, not a side hustle, uh, but it is uh, uh, getting him to uh, the dream job. And uh, so he goes on to say some other nice stuff, which they, we don't read these to be compliments to me. Way to go, David. That's really great. And then uh, Ariel writes in, uh, hey, Ken, I recommend your podcast to everybody I talk to. It's changed my life. No, it hasn't. You changed your life. It wasn't me. I'm uh, your counselor, your coach, and your cheerleader, folks. That's what you get uh, with me. Uh, but you are the ones that are making the changes. I mean, I can get fired up and do a rant on today's program, and it doesn't matter if you don't do something with it. I mean, I can talk and 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 talk, and I do. <laughs> but you're the people that have to take it and believe it and act on it. So... I appreciate all the nice notes, but you guys have got to get to the point. Even when you write these notes where you go, hey, Ken, I've been listening to your podcast or your show or whatever you want to say, and I changed my life because that's the truth. And by the way, if there's anything that we can be proud of, this is not a pride moment where you go, hey, I, I changed my life. That Say that because you did. Uh, okay, started out. Not knowing what I was good about, good at, or passionate about. And as I listen to you coach people through their reservations, and <laughs> and you were a no BS, no excuses, super savvy and super scrappy mentor that helped me flesh out my passion and turn it into a business. That's awesome. I love it, Joe. That's what I want to add to my bio. No BS, no excuses, super savvy, super scrappy. I don't know if any of that's true, but I do like the way it sounds. Super scrappy. Super savvy and super scrappy. <laughs> you know, just reminded me, one of my favorite cartoon characters, we got, like, we got a mix of young people and middle-aged people back behind the uh, glass. You remember Scrappy? Wasn't there a little dog named Scrappy? Like in Scrappy-Doo. Scrappy-Doo. Oh, yeah, Scooby-Doo's little cousin, I think. Let me at him. Scooby-Doo's nephew, Scrappy. Yes, he was always ready to fight something in somebody. Yeah, I like that. Little Scrappy. He was about this tall. Like, Scooby's the big dog, and Scrappy was, like, this big, you know? Big as uh, Scooby's foot. 
Scrappy do. I love that. Oh, it's fun. Hey, real quick. Uh, Got to get to the chat room, but don't forget, many of you out there still need to get that next job on the ladder or some of you still unemployed need to get hired. We uh, did a live event last year in the middle of, of Corona pandemic, did it here in our lobby. Nobody was in the room and I was speaking to a camera and it was a wild success. I had people tuning in from all around the world. Uh, and I think every state except Maine, I'm, not, I'm still not sure why the state of Maine hates me, but, but I've gotten over it. I kid, they don't hate me. It's just a joke. Uh, but we turned it into an 11 video lesson series called Get Hired. And it's me teaching you, and it's for anybody, high school or on up, if you're trying to get in or you're trying to move up, uh, the Get Hired digital course will help you. All you need is a computer, tablet, or phone, and you can watch it as many times as you want. It's 20 bucks. So if that's you or somebody that you know that needs that, go get it at KenColeman.com. All right, to the chat room we go. Melissa writes in, how do I begin to make a career shift from accounting to counseling? Okay, let's look at my clear path, my seven stages to meaningful work. So stage one is get clear, you're there. You're clear that you want to go into counseling. So now we look at stage two, which is get qualified. So there are four questions, and this is for our total audience here. This really takes the get qualified stage, and it makes it less intimidating because it's an intimidating stage. In fact, most people, when they get stuck in the stages, it would be stage two of get qualified because it's hard. So here are four questions you ask, and you may have already done this, but this is going to verify your plan. Oh, it actually clarifies the plan, and it verifies for you. So first question is, the education question, what do I need to learn? So what are the qualifications you need for counseling? Well, there's a degree there and there's going to be some, some other certification. So that leads to the second question, which is the experience question. What experience will I need to get early on? And then that leads to the third question, how much is it going to cost me? This is money and time. Okay. And then when you have those answers, it goes to the final question and that's the expectation question, which is, how long is this entire process of getting qualified going to take? When you get those answers, now you've got everything you need to put a plan together. And, and now because of that knowledge, it's not so scary. But the, the scariest part of getting qualified for people is the unknown. It just seems like this giant mountain off in the mist and fog. And we are like, I don't even know if that's it, where to go, how to get there. And so those four questions the education question, the experience question, the economic question, the expectation question, that takes care of it. Uh, Corey writes in, what's the best way to find an entry-level position within business and finance while still in college? Well, again, uh, any position within business and finance that's entry-level works. So go look for all the entry-level positions with small companies, mid-sized companies, large companies, uh, you know, finance companies. Just get in. So the best way to find it is to actually look for it online talking to people i mean that's really what it is i'm going to look online and then i'm going to cross reference with people that i know and what are positions that are available entry level i'm in college it doesn't need to be uh, a sexy position it doesn't matter it's an entry level position just get in so there you go 844-747-2577 all right we're going to shift i want to teach on the secret to performing under pressure the secret to performing under pressure. Now, you fill in the blank in, in an area of your life right now where you're worried that you're not going to be able to handle the moment, the pressure. Could be a big job interview. Could be a presentation that you think is key to moving you up the ladder and getting promoted. But you just think of your pressure-filled situation. And by the way, there's a personal application to this as well. So just think, all right, Ken, I, I don't perform under pressure well, or I don't think I will. I've never really had to perform under pressure. And what's holding me back from moving forward in my life is I don't like pressure. Now, there's some freaks out there like me. I love the pressure. I, I love when the red light comes on the camera, and I love speaking in front of large crowds. I love being live every day, no safety net. I love that. I know I'm a freak, but that, that it just I like it. But for the rest of you, let me give you some tips from somebody who has to perform under pressure. Even though I like it, I still have to deliver. And so this is coming from my journey and my practices. All right, here's the phrase I want you to write down. 
Wherever you're watching, type it in your phone. Here it is. And I'm going to teach out of this. Relentless preparation leads to reflexive performance. Let me say it again slow. Relentless preparation leads always. I threw that little word in there. You don't have to write that down if you don't want to. Reflexive performance. Relentless preparation leads to reflexive performance. Let me remind you. Uh, it, it, yesterday, again, I'm at home with my boys and I'm watching the playoff football game. And uh, the Chiefs are playing the Browns. And they've got the all-world quarterback, giant slayer, Patrick Mahomes. I mean, this guy, when he's on the field, the Chiefs feel like they can beat anybody. Rightfully so. He goes down with a concussion. They got a five-point lead they're nursing against a hungry, scrappy Cleveland Browns team. And you just know, you could just feel it. All the Chiefs fans around the world watching in the stadium, their, their hopes sink. Our man, Patrick Mahomes, is out with a concussion. What are we going to do? Well, it's next man up. Happens to be a guy by the name of Chad Henney, who's been in the league, I want to say, 13 years. Went to my beloved University of Michigan, played for the Wolverines, was a good quarterback, been a starter for a long time. But he hasn't played as a starter in years and years and years. He's been on the sideline the entire game. It's 20-some degrees. Here comes Chad Henney. He's got to keep this game from becoming a loss. All the entire organization, their fans, all the players, coaches, have put it all the time. It's coming down to, can our backup quarterback, who hasn't played much at all, can he lead us? Now, you want to talk about pressure. That's pressure. Uh, you could take a kicker who's got to come out there and win the game and kick a field goal in the extreme cold temperature or win, whatever. You pick this analogy. But I'm watching this yesterday, and I watch him come out, and he does a really good job. He steps up, despite throwing an interception, stayed in the game, got a huge, crucial third down run when they needed it, and then a fourth down, fourth and one, rolls out, throws a pass to Tyreek Hill, and they win the game. So how does Chad Henney step into the most pressure-filled stage in sports and step up and deliver well the answer is relentless preparation he's in the practice he's on the practice field he's taking the reps he's watching he's watching film he's got to be ready he's over there on the sideline not playing words with friends and joking around with everybody he's watching the game and he knows he's one play away from having all the pressure on him so he's engaged he has done all the practice he has shown up and put in all the reps that the starters do, knowing he's got to be ready. I've told the story of Joe Montana back in the old days, one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play. And his offensive linemen tell the story they were in a TV timeout. And they're waiting for the commercial to come back. And he's just looking around the Super Bowl crowd. This is at the Super Bowl. He's looking around the end zone. He sees John Candy, one of his favorite comedians. He goes to his offensive lineman, hey, look, guys, it's John Candy. I love that guy. He's hysterical. And he's joking around, sharing his favorite movie scenes about his favorite comedian who's standing in the back of the end zone behind him, and they're getting ready to march 90-plus yards down to try to win the Super Bowl, and his lineman marveled at how cool and calm Joe Montana was. Why? Well, a big part of it is their relentless preparation because what happens is when you feed your brain the right thoughts, when you prepare for the interview or prepare for the presentation, or whatever it is, and you prepare, and you prepare, and you prepare, and you prepare, and when you get tired, you prepare some more. This brain, this supercomputer that God gave you, has got everything it needs in it. And when you start sweating uncontrollably, and your blood pressure rises, and you feel like you're not going to be able to step up, your brain is going to do the work for you. And Chad Henney or Joe Montana or any other example you want to use of an athlete who steps up under unbelievable pressure and performs, it is because their brain takes over, their instinct takes over. I mean, it's just there. They know. I've done this two-minute drill 575 times this year between a game and practice. And I know what the plays are. I know what I've got to do. And so in the moment, guess what? Your brain takes over, instinct takes over, and you're not that nervous. And so you could go into a big job interview. 
or you can go into a big presentation where you're pitching your future and you could deliver because in that moment you've prepared so much that the whole world stops and it's like you're having an out of body experience it's and I've been there before I've been so nervous to give huge talks for the, you know, but I, but I prepared for the talk. I practiced and I, and I felt passionate that the message had to be delivered. And so when in front of 12,000 people, guess what happened? Everything stops. And it's like, I come out of my body and I'm floating above myself going, wow, that's pretty cool. A lot of people in this room. I'm delivering the goods though. That guy over there is shaking his head. He, He believes it. This gal over here is writing these notes down. And in the moment, everything stops. And all the nerves and all the insecurity and all the fear fades. Boom. I'm in the moment. And I'm just making it happen. They've interviewed athletes all the time. What, what did it feel like? It felt like I could, you know, Michael Jordan would say, I just felt like I couldn't miss. But that comes from a crazy confidence and calm that hours and hours and hours of shooting at the hoop bring athletes like that. So grab that for yourself. You don't have to be a world-class athlete to perform well under pressure. You don't have to be wildly talented to perform under pressure. You know what you need? To be relentlessly prepared. I hope that helps you. All right. My time is almost up. But before I let you go, I want to remind you that you matter and you do have what it takes. Thank you so much for joining us. Until next time, this is The Ken Coleman Show. Press on.